Welcome to episode 36 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast for sharing tips, apps, and gear for iPhone and iPad, along with related technologies that get us using iOS in a fun, productive, and meaningful way. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and joining me this week is Adam Christensen from the MacCast podcast. How are you doing, Adam? Hey, I'm doing good. Great. I'm really hard to quit apps and not quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> but good, I'm, I'm doing good. Doing good. Great, great. Uh, and, Should have uh, done this before we started recording. Th- that's okay. You know, that's I'm okay. a professional. So you don't are. Worry. You are. But you, it's because you installed <laughs> Mojave. So, but that's another story. Um, so, uh, I I wanted to just let the listeners know uh, we we met at MacStock a couple of years ago, right? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. And and then that's how we got to be friendly and uh, and we we had a great time this past year at MacStock and uh, during this I mean, this year it was a lot of fun and. Uh, I ended up on your show, which was great, and uh, I figure, what the heck, we'll get you on my show, and uh, we'll have some fun here talking about iOS and apps and all that stuff. Uh, tell the listeners a little bit about the MacCast, uh, for those of you who don't know who Adam is. Oh, sure. Um, MacCast is a podcast about all things Macintosh. I've been doing it yeah. for a while. We say it's for Mac geeks by Mac geeks, which is really dated at this point, I guess. Uh, <laughs> since, you know, when I started it, we, we really only had Macs. We didn't have yeah. iPhones iPads, you know, way back in 2004. So it's a podcast I've been doing for a long, long time. Yeah, it's pretty popular. People seem to like it. They do. What we try to do is cover um, a little bit of Mac, what I call news commentary. So I comment yeah. on the news uh, stories of the week, the ones that interest me. And then uh, we try to help people out with tips and tricks. And, uh, you know, we take questions, voicemails, emails. People will write in and say, I'm having this problem with my Mac. And we try to help people out with their yeah. technology. So it's a it's sort of an offshoot of um, my little version of a like virtual user group in a lot of ways. Yeah, so go. a lot of the things we do on the show are the kinds of things that I would get when I go to my user groups and and right. talk and geek out on Mac Quick, and click, Apple, click. Apple stuff. So it's really all things Apple at this point. Yeah, and absolutely, definitely. And kind of yeah. held on to the old the old tagline because <laughs> that's okay. Like that's, they don't, people, people don't like change. Apparently. No, no, we know that. And, uh, don't speaking of user groups, everybody knows I'm a president of a user group here in Chicago and, uh, kind of have to have you come on and come on our, 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 uh, group if maybe whether it be Skype or otherwise, but uh, yeah, I do a lot of, I do a lot of remote. Presentation yeah. for so, users, so. so uh, yeah, we love user groups and they've been great and, uh, been very good to me. And, and I, that's why I bring all this great information here to this podcast. So, um, and, uh, so speaking of news, I think you, I figured I'd throw some great news stories with you so we can have some good discussions. Um, I wanted to open up uh, well, the first articles was um, what to expect at the Apple rumored event coming up supposedly in this month, which is October. Um, right. And I think the, the, the of, of ones I would like to talk about is the iPad and the iPad Pro. What, you, what it, I think they're talking about is they've been talking about uh, coming up with a one with the, it's going gonna, it's gonna to not have a, a home button, right? Is that what the yeah. rumor had been? Uh, an iPad 10s, yes. Yeah. An iPad 10s. That's what I figured. And an iPad be. 10s Max. No, that's not really what they're calling them. <laughs> but essentially, yes, bringing the bringing the iPhone 10 design to the iPad Pro form factors. So uh, I think they're mostly talking about iPad Pro, right? Not. I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be an updated, just like nine point. No. Seven inch iPad. I think it, yeah, it says it's supposed to. What is expected is the iPad Pro with the Face ID. Right. Um, so, but I would 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 make me assume that they're no longer going to have the uh, the touch uh, the touch ID anymore. anymore right. Uh, which would make total sense. Um, and I think they, they they said potential wild cards could be maybe the I add the the Air. Power Mat might actually come out. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, but Apple talked about it over a year ago. Dead and I think that thing is I dead. Think in the water. I think so too. I, I think it's not. I mean, there's a lot of rumors about yeah. um, the underlying technology. We talked about this a little bit on the iOS show. Michael Johnston, who yeah. is doing that and literally studying to be a, a rocket scientist, um, wow, and knows a little bit about. Uh, that kind of technology. Yeah. I'm not super into it. I just know what I know through, um, you know, through doing the podcast. But you, you know, you got a bunch of coils in there generating magnetic, or not magnetic fields, yeah. but generating radio fields basically. And when you start to get those close together, they start interfering with each other and right. causing problems. And Apple's trying to jam like three in there. I think they said there's like 24 different coils um, in this design and. They kind of overlap and they run into each other. And so they're having 
interference problems, but the other thing that all of those radio waves do as well is they generate heat. Yeah. And heat is a big problem with wireless chargers, and heat's also a big problem for devices sitting on top of wireless chargers. You know, you right. don't want your phone and its batteries or things getting too hot. So, I mean, I know some of the higher-end, like, rapid chargers for wireless that just have single coil designs have like fans built into them, you know, right. so they can actually cool itself. So I think, I think Apple is trying <laughs> to um, sort of engineer out the laws of physics using their reality distortion. And I think what they're finding yeah. out <laughs> yeah. is that, you know, physics laws are actual laws of nature and laws of the world. And, yeah. And no amount of will uh, can sort of undo them. Um, and a couple other wild cards, they say maybe the AirPods too. I know it was supposed to be the wireless charging for the AirPods. Um, I don't know. If yeah, I think happen. that'll still happen. I mean, that's yeah. just the standard Qi charging. It's just, yeah. you know, you're going to have to have separate mats. You're not going to get everything in one mat. No, you know? we're not going to put an a- iPad, iPhone, uh, Apple Watch, <laughs> all that now, on I don't, mat. Yeah, they, now the interesting thing on the iPad side of things is I don't believe that the iPads are supposed to get wireless charging. I think that's right. remaining exclusive oh, okay. for phones. That would make sense because uh, it is big. Yeah. Yeah. Getting it sort of on the target would be. So it is expected. (laughs) There is some contingent uh, of folks who believe that um, they may get USB-C. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other discussion. People were kind of worried. Oh, my God. I've had the lightning connected for all these years and they may start with the iPad with USB-C. Uh, it kind of makes sense. I mean, it's it the does. next step down from from the notebooks, and so we've we've gone full USB C with the notebooks. Um, what's interesting thing about that is, you know, would they, <laughs> you know, and this has not yeah. been rumored. I'm just curious. You know, no. it does potentially open up the possibility for you know Thunderbolt. True. <laughs> on, on that, that would be interesting, right? So that would definitely yeah. be interesting. So and it's, then. Um, and they're talking about a new Apple Pencil. I also saw a rumor that potentially they were thinking about maybe that that pencil could work with the iPhone, which would be interesting. But, but I know that uh, I know Steve Jobs would not be be rolling in his grave right now because that we not supposed to have a stylus with an iPhone. So I don't know yeah. if that's going to happen or not. But uh, so that should be interesting. We'll see what that happens. And then uh, and then and you and I talked about the HomePod earlier on your pod, on your show. Um, there t- maybe a possibly a lower priced HomePod. Hard to say. Um, I guess the whole pod was too soon. It's too I, soon. You I know, think. I think it'll happen eventually. I think the home pod is still selling reasonably well as far as Apple's concerned, despite what the media likes to say about it. Right. Um, I heard some numbers, I think they came from consumer intelligence research partners or something like that. They estimate that Apple so far this year has sold about three million yeah. home pods or so. Yeah. Which I predicted, you know, I predicted the first year they'd probably sell about five million. So I think they're on track to even do higher than that and considering the holiday season's coming up. So yeah. I think they're not gonna want to pollute or dilute the market going into the holiday season on a product that's probably gonna sell pretty well. Problem is, is like a lot of Apple Watchers and people feel like, oh, five million units, that's so bad for Apple, you know, oh so bad for Apple because <laughs> they're used to, you know, 50 million iPhones. Well, you just can't compare the two. And, yeah, you know, it's true. a different product, it's a different market. And, you know, any other company uh, would love to have Apple's HomePod business of selling, you know, five million units in a year. Right. <laughs> it's just, you take it outside <laughs> of the context of Apple and it's suddenly, you know, it's not... It's not a unsuccessful product. And you also have to remember, too, that um, so many people said exactly the same thing about the Apple Watch the first year. Came. True. And it sold similar. It, it sold, I believe, in similar numbers. I'd have to go back and double check everything. But, yeah, yeah right. I mean, Apple tends to expand the line when they've saturated the market at a given price point. And I'm not convinced that they've saturated the market yeah. for the current HomePod design. I think there's a lot of people that, you know, it's extra cash. It's I, it's one of those I don't need it kind of purchases exactly. as opposed to say like a phone or an iPad where people feel that's more of a daily tool that they actually need and need in their lives. And so as an annex, what amounts to an accessory really yeah. um, is it's a, it's a little bit harder to sell. And I think it takes a little longer for people to come around to it. Um, but I think, you know, where it gets out, I love my HomePod, you love your HomePod, you know, you yeah. start to hear your tech friends are like, yeah, the HomePod's really, really great. And then it sort of trickles down to the more 
casual users. I'm like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I got some extra cash for the holidays. I'm going to buy one of those. Or I'm, I, 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 there's a nerd in my life I know who would love one and might <laughs> buy one for, for him or herself. And, um, you know, they'll get well, it as a gift or something. The only thing that drives me crazy about the HomePod is when you say, hey, you, it it, it, it comes up on the, the you, it, maybe you want to talk into your iPhone or your iPad. And the, the HomePod trumps it when you're there. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out that algorithm. I mean, it's supposed to be the kind of thing where if you're, especially with the um, the attention feature on the new iPhone 10, 10S yeah. uh, models, you know, if the if the true depth camera system is recognizing that it's the screen's awake and you're sort of actively looking at it, it's supposed to default to that device. And same thing with the Apple watch. If the Apple watch is detected right. race to wrist right before you give that statement or race to talk or whatever it's called, um, race, race to wake. Race to wake. So I think, I think race to wake is supposed to be the trigger, right? So if I've just picked up my iPhone, it just woke up the screen and I issue a command, it should, it should do that on the iPhone. Um, that's not been my experience that that works hundred percent reliably. So yeah. I'm, to me, that feels like a tweak to software, you know, like iOS right. 12 just needs a tweak to kind of work on that, at that algorithm, that handoff algorithm to get it, to get yeah. it just right. But I agree with you. Yeah. Very often the HomePod will pick up and the dilemma yeah. there is, especially if you're issuing a command that, you know, the HomePod can't handle. Cause I mean, because right. it doesn't have a screen, there are certain things that it just can't it can't deal with it can't do so right right so but anyway that's uh that's what's out there what we're, 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 is being expected they're saying potentially it could be um uh october 16th of this year in 2018 uh that they're also saying because google's having their event the next week on the 9th they don't want to conflict with that so they're going to do it the following week so we'll we'll see uh, the invitations uh, will be historically a- the last couple of years i believe they've done it on a thursday yeah and not a Tuesday. They did Tuesdays a couple years back, um, and it tends tended to be pushed later and later in the month. Um, considering yeah. doesn't the the ten R ship on the twenty seventh? I believe that right? so. I think it does ship. Uh, I thought it was it was pre orders. I got to go to the website. I believe it was pre orders. Yeah, that, that right around that time. Yep. Think pre- or maybe it ships on the 26th. That's the Friday. Yeah. So like, yeah. um, I think it's the 19th and 26th if I'm getting those dates right. So I'm throwing my prediction out right now. I think it's going to be the 20, 25th, 25th, Thursday. The 25th. Okay. That's my, that's my guess. Right. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens with the, with the event. So, um, and the uh, next article and discussion I want to talk about was, uh, the iOS 12.1 beta. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and that was released a couple of weeks ago, and they also have beta two out now. It just came out like a day or two ago. Um, initially, the beta update uh, included uh, the, the return of group FaceTime with uh, thirty two uh, people can talk at once. What do you think of that? The FaceTime. Um, I think it's about time. I mean, yeah. it, it, it FaceTime is is looking kind of I don't know if dated's the word, but like yeah. we had group stuff with iChat and then it went away and everybody like every platform has group video chat like right. you've even got like discord and slack and skype <laughs> and you know so the, the fact that it's been lacking from apple's own technology is kind of kind of lame so they need to get it they need to get yeah. it in there i don't know what's taking so long yeah they have it they know they pulled it pulled it back because they were having some problems so uh, but the, that's that's coming out. Uh, Real time preview of the depth of control in p- portrait mode for the the uh, the 10s and the 10s Max. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, that's a depth control feature. Uh, allows you to adjust uh, the portrait mode, depth right, of field. Depth of field. Yeah, so it, that's pretty sweet. Um, and then oh, you know, new color watch faces for that in the watch app. I I'm, I can't wait for that. You can have actual colors. That's exciting. <laughs> huh. So. Uh, that the, the uh just the like black colors yeah it says uh the color watch faces to be found in the watch app that allow you to select from 51 different colors and huh. includes tick circulars full screen cells all kinds of fun stuff so they're adding that and that was when it first came out uh, and then beta 2 it just got released and there were some complaints about uh charging 
it wasn't charging properly um, uh, for the yeah, specific, like, yeah, specifically the, the 10s and with, the 10s plus. Yeah, the 10S yeah plus. and it seemed like just with the lightning cable, though, right? It wasn't a problem with wireless yeah. charging. Yeah, yeah. So they think I got that. And of course, very important. They added seventy more emoji characters. You know, that's important. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and oh, emojis are always updating. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. yeah so. The, on the lightning thing, I'm I'm curious because I looked into this a little bit and I even tested yeah. mine. I did notice like mine. The only problem I ever had was there was kind of a slight delay. Like I would yeah, plug I in that. before the icons would update. Um, there was a delay, but it it would eventually like. You know, do its blink and it just just kind of slow. It was some, uh, but some, I never had the problem that some people were saying where it just never, you know, it never went into charging mode, even though it was plugged into a lightning cable. Yeah, some some people were complaining about it, uh, but it it will be resolved. It was the plug. It was uh, it wouldn't automatically start charging when you plugged it in. I, and I actually experienced it the other night. I was you know I plug it. I always plug my my phone on my bed on my nightstand, and I plugged it in, and it didn't put pick up right away. Hmm, what is going on here? I'm gonna plug it, plug it back in. Finally, it, it, it recognized it. So. So it was just it's kind of, so it's probably just unreliably. I even wondered like, is it actually charging and it just is not updating the icon, or was it literally not? It just wasn't. It didn't charging. start charging. Yeah, no, it didn't start charging at all. So yeah. very strange. So, but uh, yeah, I would venture to say the beta uh, twelve point one will be out very soon because um, um, that's you know, they're usually pretty quick with the betas that are, uh, as far as uh, the 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 dot one increments or dot two increments. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, the, uh, uh, another story I, I, I've caught my eye was, uh, you know, this crazy thing that they've been talking about is the, 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 pre the presidential alerts that they, that was sent out uh, the <laughs> other day. Uh, I didn't get it. Did you get it? Oh yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I didn't get all it. All the, all the devices in my house went off. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing happened to me. I guess I was, I guess I, I'm, I'm exempt. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but for right now, they say you cannot dis disable it. Um, you you are unable to disable it. So it uh, uh, because it's a, these are specific alerts from FEMA or, or, or the government. Because, but you are able to turn these off in on the iPhone if anybody isn't aware of that. So, but uh, other alerts, especially Amber alerts and emergency alerts, because you know you get like when there's a flash flood that goes off at two o'clock in the morning, drives you know you, you get woken up. Um, um, by doing that, you actually can go into the settings app under notifications and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and toggle uh, the switches off for the Amber Alerts and government alerts. But I had those off, so I mean, but again, that wasn't supposed to turn off this presidential alert, so I, I don't know why I didn't get it. I, I, I had my phone. I always have it with me. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Very, very yeah, I mean, and, and putting it into silent mode, um, I think with the Amber Alerts, if you're in silent mode... Uh, you don't get the you don't get the horrible um, sound. alarm sound, but you do still get a vib vibration yeah. and, a, and an alert um, with these government the the presidential one. You don't have that option though. Right. My wife noted like I had my phone not on silent mode, yeah. and so it kept going off until I acknowledged the alert. Whereas with hers, she said that it it made the sound once and that was it. Like it didn't. So it made one sort of ding yeah. or, you know, whatever that it has a custom ring. So it made like one alert ring, displayed the alert, and then then the audio stopped. So it, the audio yeah. didn't continue. And the only difference between our two devices was hers was in silent mode. So it, silent ah. mode may uh, limit the amount of noise it makes, but it doesn't suppress the noise completely as, as near as we can tell. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that's done and gone. I mean, the, the, the amount of time that that alert will get used will probably be very little, minimal, if at all. We'd have to have a pretty bad situation if he's using that. So uh, let's uh, move on and uh, let's talk a little bit about Siri, sor Siri shortcuts. And you said you have dabbled a little bit into it with using. Yeah, I played around shortcuts. with them a little bit. I, I had a bunch that were set up when it was um, workflow. So I was I was yeah. a workflow user. I had played around with some things. I haven't found anything um, that I've noticed that for me is particularly useful um, or that I would use on a, a daily basis. I think there were some Siri suggestions. So I have, um, I use Carrot Weather, the Carrot yep. Weather app, and they have support for it. So I did set up a couple of, of nice. little Siri shortcuts for that where I can say, you know, give me the full, a full weather report or something like that. I forget what command I see. I already 
you can tell I use it a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've already forgotten what the command is, but it's something like, you know, uh, a yeah. hey, lady, give me full weather report or something like that. And then that'll come from carrot, um, instead of like the default weather app. Right. Uh, so I haven't really used it too much. I, it was fun to kind of play around with and, and, um, that was about it. <laughs> like I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's really a, in my mind, it's really kind of a power user feature. I know people are particularly excited about them. Those people who use right. third party podcast apps. Yep. Uh, yeah. cause you can, you can have your podcast started up in your favorite podcast app, you know, with your voice rather than having to open the app and go find an episode or something like that. So I guess that's kind of cool. Um, I fell back to using the default Apple podcast app and I've been yeah. pretty happy with it. So no, yeah. The, the, in fact, yeah, I didn't even talk or think about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me, let me run through this, uh, uh, list here that, uh, we have a link on the show notes from, uh, Mac, Mac rumors, uh, the, top five useful or i guess say five useful series shortcuts calculating a tip i thought i thought that actually is pretty good i tried that and uh it's pretty awesome just uh, did ask siri asks you how much do you want to put how much is the bill and uh and it'll just automatically calculate your tip for you and you also can tell it if you want specific percentages if it's not the standard 12 15 18 or 20 so uh the convert burst to, G- to gif or gif whichever you prefer uh, allows you to uh, take the series of burst photos that you took and it'll automatically create a uh, GIF for you. Uh, same thing with live photos. Uh, watching a music video, I don't know how useful that would be. Uh, you're watching a music video shortcut, to, you also can uh, play uh, Apple Music Song and then search for his accompanying music, music video. Uh, what's happening on Twitter? Another one that's, I don't know how, how helpful that is, but uh, you can do that. And then you is talk it- about, go ahead. Uh, if it would read out like recent tweets, that might be interesting. Yeah, it just says if uh, you can create a see what's happening shortcut and allow you to view. So no, no, no yeah. reading. So the Same. Twitter Twitter moments section. <laughs> like okay, exciting. And you talked about carrot weather. It also they also dark sky is another one that's out there. Right. Um, that uh, you can uh, see a weather forecast from information from pulled from dark sky using a command as well. But what's interesting um, is I'm a Siri or a carrot. I I pay I for both. the pro version or whatever it is, and yeah. I think they that gives me the ability to to define dark sky as my weather data source, which I think I've done. I also have the dark sky app. But. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if I'm remembering right. I, I think yes, I, I think so I have I'm, that right. I'm, I'm or maybe you remember it might be these weather things. underground. I don't. Huh? <laughs> get you remember these things because it's hard to you forget. I, I'm with you on that stuff. And then if you go into I'm the app, old David, we're both getting, getting old. old. We're both getting old. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, and then if you actually go into the shortcuts app in itself, that it does have some great shortcuts already built into there as well as you can create your own. And like you said, it this is the pre- this can be a little advanced. So this can be a little scary. I mentioned in the last show, um, our friend David Sparks has an amazing uh, field guide uh, to talking about the series shortcuts. He did a full uh, did a full sessions on on using this so if you really want to geek out and find out more about this stuff yeah I'm, we're going to put that in the show notes as well uh but if you go in here uh things like shorten url that's always a very pretty practical thing you can use um that's already sit there in the actual shortcuts uh downloading a youtube video uh, sometimes i do that i don't know how practical it is on the ipad or the iphone but uh that's available uh, well, you share- can save it to your like icloud library then right your mm-hmm. icloud documents yep and that'd be handy I just I it because it does come in handy. I do it. I do it a lot too. But I, you know, I end up using third party software on on a Mac. So, uh, but yeah, when you went, wouldn't you rather do it on your iPhone, or your iPad? It'd be a lot easier. Well, and so I I'm much more apt to use shortcuts versus right. Siri shortcuts, and I, I think there's a lot of confusion in the right. community right That's now why I was about going, differences. Going with both here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead if you want to elaborate on. Well, that. no. So I was just gonna I was just gonna comment. So we you know we were earlier specifically talking about Siri shortcuts. I have a number of shortcuts right. that I have set up that are triggered, uh, triggered off of the share sheet or the share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The share sheet basically. Right. Um, and that's where something like the, the YouTube one would be handy because you could copy, right. you know, a YouTube link to the clipboard and then hit the sharing button yep. and then, or, or probably just hit the sharing button right from that YouTube page. It would grab the URL from the page, you know, copy to the clipboard, download it into a folder right in your, so you don't have to have a third-party app for that, or right. even open up a third-party app. So you can do that from almost anywhere. So that I use them more there. I think I have a couple too that I can activate from the um, 
uh, what did they call the widgets screen? Because I'm not, that's not the right name for it. But uh, uh, the search screen or whatever it is oh, right, on right. your iPhone, right? Um, then uh, getting images from page is another one that could come in handy too. Sometimes you want to save an image that's on a, on a, on a web page. Uh, that's again, like you said, don't confuse this with with Siri shortcuts. This is these are actual in the shortcuts app that you can set up, and like you said, you can put it in the share sheets. You can create a home, uh, uh, create a shortcut on the home page. So it's it's very easy to to go through okay. and. And widget, which is it? Widgets is right, you know. So you can put you can put some of these into the widgets inside your um, inside the Siri search screen. So you know when you swipe left from your home screen, it get the you get the list of shortcuts there. Like right. um, one that I had for a while uh, because it's just not default, and I didn't want to do a third party app for, for this was like logging caffeine intake into the health app. Hmm. Okay. There's one for that. So you tap the button and it says, all right, what'd you, what'd you drink? Coffee or espresso? And then it does a standard like eight ounce cup of coffee or something like that, or a four ounce espresso caffeine yeah. content. Yeah, Logs that so. into the health app. So. <laughs> but uh, Siri shortcuts and shortcuts, great, great new feature. Like you said, the workflow app is which uh, Apple bought over a year ago and they've now integrated this into the operating system, the OS. Uh, and it's very, uh, a very easy to work with, um, and should definitely should check it out. And, you know, who knows? We might in future episodes, I might be doing a few tips here and there of things I got to learn myself. Here, a lot of things it does, and yeah, you, you forget think, when you don't play with it. I think overall, the best way to think about it is, you know, it's essentially like Automator on the Mac is, but for iOS, and right. and so I think individual users using it is going to be very similar to that sort of experience, like. It, I think it's more of a power user feature, right? If, if yeah, there's something you need to automate on your iOS device, this is a great tool to have. Um, I think the dilemma right now is it's a, it's a hot buzz topic in our community. And I think there's a lot of pressure on, you know, like people who just aren't power users feeling yeah. like I need to know about this. I don't, I sh everybody's telling me I should use this. And it's like, I would say to those people, don't worry about it. Yeah. Like it's a thing. It's there. If you need it someday, it's there for you. Uh, yeah. But like, don't let someone convince you that like you're missing out on some huge thing by not, not using it. Now, the one area where I think it does sort of cross over to uh, more casual users is yeah. third party developers can add Siri shortcuts to their apps. And that was like right. what carrot did and stuff like that. And they can expose those to their users. So I think, you know, if you have a favorite app, like your favorite podcast app, it might have some Siri shortcuts that you might want to use, but they're just going to be canned and built in and they'll already be kind of, Right. set up for you. So you just, you just use those. Um, but you never have to open up the shortcuts app yourself necessarily, unless nope. you suddenly find you have some sort of need or desire or, you know, but until then, yeah, don't worry about it too much. Yeah. So <laughs> have fun with it. That's what, yeah, that's what it's there for. I mean, and to make things easier too. Yeah. So, uh, let's move on a little bit. And, uh, well, last week's show, I had Chuck Joyner on. We talked about uh, the iOS 12 and all the new features that were added. Uh, what I want to talk about during this episode was some of the th uh, new features that, that you and I would like and uh, get your thoughts on it. A couple of them I had that stuck out for sure, and I forgot to mention last time, last episode, was the password integration with third-party apps. That is so awesome. Oh, my awesome. God. <laughs> so awesome. And, Life and, and changing. Yeah, it really is, especially and, for a long time one password user. Yeah. But even even the built in stuff, like I say, I still save a lot of my passwords. I still had yeah. been doing sort of hybrid things, so I have a lot in an iCloud keychain as well. And so what's nice now is it doesn't matter where they are, right? It just all sort of just works. Exactly, and you know? um, just for those of you who don't know where that is, when you're in iOS 12, if you go into uh, settings and then go under um, passwords and accounts under under autofill passwords if you if you tap that that's where you turn that on and if you any any third party password manager that you have installed will will have it under the allow filling from of course i iCloud keychain will always be there unless unless you don't have that turned on uh, but I one think password you can also turn off iCloud keychain and say yeah, only use last yeah. pass or only use one password yes you can so if you just tap it and then it'll, it'll uncheck it then it will not offer that as a choice i i've currently been using both just kind of see how it goes but uh, yeah. I agree with you. And one password's my 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 favorite, uh, uh, my favorite uh, the, as far as that goes. So uh, one feature, one feature that I think you need to leave iCloud um, keychain on for is this new feature, and it's again related to this. One of my favorite features is hmm. 
um, accounts where you have um, a text message for your two-factor authentication where they send you an SMS, which is actually oh, right. a really horrible way to do it, but yes. <laughs> a lot of services do that. Yeah. Um, it'll automatically copy that to the clipboard oh, yeah, yeah. and fill it in for you. I, I just I just, did, just did it today. I had to go to my bank and they wanted to re-authenticate because they just got the phone not too long ago. I hadn't been in that as partic- particular app. And right. as soon as it came up, it auto filled it. Oh, that was so cool! <laughs> I'm so tired. Of you. You're going to look at the t- you're going to look at the message, and then you want to type the number in, and before it disappears, and no, it's it automatically populates it. So that that was another really cool thing they added. Um, yeah. But, uh, what other fe- what other uh, features are you liking uh, on the in iOS 12 so far that you've been that been using that Ooh. you can think of? This is a great question. Specific, I, I mean, the password thing is probably the biggest one. Yeah. Um, Are you using screen time at all? I am using screen time uh, more What's just as like an informational tool than anything yeah. else. You Me know, too. it's like, um, you know, I go in and look at it occasionally. It's kind of interesting to watch and see what's going on. Um, but, you know, is it changing my life? No. Am I using any of the uh, extra controls? Like, am I setting any limits or downtime or anything like that? No. Um, I have it set up. I, we have a family account, so I have it set up on, right. you know, to monitor my kids time too. But, you know, my kids are really good. And we've, we from very early age talked about screen time and, and we've always just set sure. internal, internal limits on content and what they can go to and how much social media they can interact with, which is nothing. They actually don't have much interest in social media. Um, And so, you know, again, it's more informational. It's more like, oh, that's interesting. You know, like, okay, that's what they're, that's what they're doing on their phones, but it's not anything like I need to go in and say, oh, you know, no, we need to set an app limit. Um, The one, the one area where it came up though, and actually this is something I'm more frustrated with, with, with screen time. And this is a good thing for anybody who uses parental controls to know about all Mm -hmm. the parental controls um, have moved inside screen time. Right. Yeah. They moved it. Um, so that's great and fine. I think it kind of makes sense to a certain degree. It's confusing Um, when people forget. (laughs) Yeah. But then, but then where it became a problem for me is I do set parental controls on my kid's phone or phones or had, and I set a passcode on that so they can't go in and change those parental controls. You know, some of the things that I specifically don't want them to do is like be able to add accounts. So like, right. you know, Facebook's not turned on and I don't want them to be able to go in and add a Facebook account if they were. Sure. And and they wouldn't even do that without telling me. So it's kind of a moot point, but it was just one of those things, right? It's just like, okay, we'll just set this up. Um, but then uh, with screen time, my daughter who uh, is like aware of and into this stuff came to me and said, Hey, I want to be able to set my own app limits. Like I wasn't going to set any app limits on it, mm. but she was looking at her usage and she's like, I, I spent a lot of time on Pinterest. I want to limit it. Um, but I can't cause there's a passcode. So she would either have to tell me, Oh, go in and set this app limit for me. Or I had to remove the passcode, which I was, I was happy to do for the screen time stuff, but it also meant that I had to disable the passcode for the parental controls. So because they're now all under that one screen, it's now a problem. So I'm going to give Apple some feedback on that and say, look, you know, yeah. you know, maybe the kids want to be able to adjust their own downtime and screen time. And maybe a parent is OK with that. I am totally OK with that. If my kids want to do self-regulation, right. I'd much rather have them do that than than me regulating them because I don't need to. It's never been a problem uh, right. for us. Um, but I do kind of still want to have control over the parental controls. And now I can't separate the two. So, yeah. So just for everybody knows how to get to that is if you go into settings, there, there is a actual entry called screen time. If you go yep. into there, there's where you go in and see your screen time at the top there. It tells you how many minutes, hours and minutes and gives breakdown for over the, over the few, over the days. And then, like you said, the downtime app limits always allowed and you can always go in there and change the settings. Um, you can do a screen time passcode. So, so like you can control pers- your kids if you want to, to go in there. And you can share it across your devices. So if you turn that on, it'll share it across to your iPad too, if you have, as well. If you have your iPad with your iPhone on the same account, and then yep, you decide you track it all together, and then you can get you can even get separate reports for each device. Or yeah, that all is all is a single report. Yeah, no, it's it's great stuff. And then uh, setting it up, setting up screen time for your family, like what you what you did. So you can go in there and turn that on. And if you don't want to do it, you know, use it at all. And when I talked to Chuck last week, he says I don't use it, and I turned it off. <laughs> 
So you can turn it off if you want to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to leave it on. I don't yeah, go in there and me. look at it very much. It's just kind yeah. of sitting there running in the background. Um, I guess maybe you might have privacy concerns, but I mean, I think it all stays on device and is encrypted in the cloud. And I don't think that's data that Apple is using, or even if they are, they're probably anonymizing it. Um, but I don't think they are using it. I don't, I don't remember. I probably should have looked into that. Think about that. But knowing how Apple is on privacy, my guess is it's like, they don't even, they're not even looking at it. Yeah. Um, the other feature that I, I, I like uh, is uh, is uh, that they changed is a do not disturb, um, especially the bedtime feature where you can turn that on and off and kind of mute it. It is kind of strange to see that when it's coming up in the screen now that, that it, it puts, it, puts it in that mode, but you can go back and, you know, turn it off for a brief time while, while, while you're going through and using your phone. Uh, I don't know if you use do not disturb at all, but. Uh, I do. I, I, I have it set up to automate. Um I guess one feature I I do like having having, but I haven't really used it yet. But I think I will at some point. Mm-hmm. Is the new um, notification center options from the lock screen? Yes, yes, yeah. So specifically, what they call deliver quietly, which allows you to if if suddenly you're getting too many messages from a particular type of notification in your notification center on the lock screen, if you swipe to the left and kind of keep going. So as you first swipe to the left, you know, you get the clear button, but if you keep going all the way, you'll get a manage button. And if you tap on that, uh, you get some additional options. Uh, and one of them is called deliver quietly. And what that will do is it will temporarily, uh, make that notification not appear on the lock screen or in the little alert, it'll still go into the notification center. So when you swipe up, it'll still be there, uh, but it just won't be on the lock, you know, cluttering up the lock screen. So if you feel like suddenly something's cluttering up the lock screen too much, you could do that. And then you can do it again um, from the notification center just to undo it. So you can, you could quiet it for a little bit and then bring it back up. So, you know, a good example of this is if you're in some group message at work or something like that, and suddenly people are going crazy or group slack, you know, and it's like, a particular thread is going nuts. You can say, Hey, just let's mute that for a little bit. And then you also have quick access to the other, you know, to completely turn it off or just change all, all of the settings. But I have found that to be kind of helpful. And and yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure how I feel about grouped notifications yet. (laughs) No, you you don't like them. Um, I, I, I don't know yet. That's, (laughs) that's my opinion. Uh, You know, so like, bringing up and I only see one, one of my emails, but there's 11 of them, you know, uh, you can still expand them open, but I kind of liked seeing them all in a row, but I don't know. I haven't turned it off yet. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm trying to think of it. I'm trying to think of any other big new features. The, uh, that I really, I'm like, Oh yeah, that, that kind of changed how I use my phone. I mentioned this last week. I'll mention it again because I'm so so happy they fixed this. Was the no no more accidental screenshots with the volume up button. I would do that all the time. It just was great, driving me crazy. You, I would just push the button and then oh, there's a screenshot again. I had to delete it out of it, delete it out and get rid of it. And so how have they how have they changed that? It says uh, they've turned it off where you can't accidentally just push it. Uh, whereas. Uh, uh, you know, what do you do a screenshot? You do the, the power button and the volume up. I guess it was right. happening to me. The I side button, the power and the volume yeah. up. Yeah, it That's was happening squeezing. to me all the time. So they've they've made some changes where it doesn't uh, doesn't have you do it all the time. All the time. Um, now, if they would fix it where I the the keyboard would wouldn't come up during a text message, I do that all the time too. When I'm when I'm actually responding to somebody, you know, you could hit the mic down at the bottom right very easily uh, while you're texting, and it. I wish they would move that somewhere. <laughs> oh, here, here's here's a dumb one, but I use it all the time, and I tried to use it all the time in iOS 11, which is the um, swipe up to close background apps. <laughs> yes. No, oh, I'm so glad they fixed that. And <laughs> well, on on i on the on the uh, iPhone 10 and 10s and 10s Max. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can swipe up and not have to tap the the minus to close it. It was crazy. <laughs> they had that in iOS 11. <laughs> Yeah, that was that no, was that's a, a stupid one, but I mean, it's probably that's probably the one I use the most. Although I don't, you know, you don't even really need to close background apps, and so I don't even do it that much anymore. But, uh, but uh, we, uh, we talked about definitely you see some speed improvements. I'm I'm very pleased with that, and of course, we, you and I both have new phones, so 
of course the speed's good. <laughs> so, and face ID is better, so I'm happy about that too. Yeah, and then yeah, that that they did add that new feature where you can add multiple faces if you want, or you can like if you wanted to add your wife in there, you could those kind of things. So now with that, the, I mean, would that even work? Because don't those doesn't that work like the Touch ID fingerprints where those yeah. time out after like if your wife never opens your phone for yeah, you know two know. weeks, wouldn't that face just sort of time yeah, out sure. and revert back to passcode? Until, uh, you know, and I think that'd be fine. It would just mean the first time your spouse tried to activate it, would, you'd have to use the passcode. And I mean, that's how that's how Touch ID worked is like yeah. you had a fingerprint in there that wasn't used for a certain period of time or or it wasn't just a fingerprint. It was like if any of those fingerprints weren't used for a certain period of time, I think it was 48 hours. So if yeah. you never unlocked your phone for 48 hours, it would it would lock it out. So maybe it doesn't. I don't think so. Cause I, w- I would have multiple fingers and I wouldn't use all the fingers all the time. No, 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 no. You, yeah. I mean, I, In I'm, touch ID. I'm kind of backtracking now cause now oh, I remember okay. how it worked. It was. So if you set up touch ID and then your phone sat for two days and you never unlocked it, yeah. then you would not be able to, and then you picked oh, it right, up right, right, on right. the third day, you wouldn't be able to do it. So, even with multiple faces, you could have the same thing. So if nobody with right. a face in Face ID uses the device for two days to unlock it, then I would assume it defaults back to passcode. It might even be sooner than that. Yeah. I think it's even sooner than that for Face ID. It might be yeah. um, 24 Either hours. way, so. Face ID is pretty awesome, I think. I, I like it. Um, I've been happy with it's it. It's growing so, on me. It's, it's growing got, on me. It's got better. It's got a lot better <laughs> from iOS 11, that's for sure. So uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, talked a little bit about iOS 12, um, the Apple Watch. And you still have a Series 3, is that correct? Series 2. Series 2, okay. And you're, you're Way still back happy. on Series 2. I you're still it. happy with it. Still happy Super with it. happy with it, okay. yeah. For those There's you- nothing in the new ones that I feel I need to have. Um, certainly nothing I feel like I need to spend $700 on. Well, I didn't spend $700. <laughs> I ended up spending zero, but the reason why I was able to do that is because I did have a Series 3, and I have the new Apple Watch Series 4. I traded in my Series 3, and Apple has a pretty good trading program. I was pretty impressed. Uh, they gave me $175 for it, uh, so that's actually not too shabby, com- considering it's about $100 less than if you were to go buy a new one, because um, the new one, you could still buy a Series 3, and I think it's like 279 so... Um, and um, had a hundred dollar gift card for from credit card points, which was a bonus. And then, um, of course, uh, my, being a little active selling some items on eBay, so I got some extra cash. So, so it was essence. It was free <laughs> for me anyway. Uh, but well, the, I'm assuming you got a you got a sport model. Yeah, I got the sport. I was waiting, sitting waiting because it was hard to find them actually because a lot of the stores didn't have them. Um, I got the space gray and the forty-four millimeter, and it was the the black band, which is fine with me. I got so many bands as it is. Oh, of course. Oh yeah. Also, if, when you trade in the, the watch, they let you keep your old band too. So, got so I have an extra band out of the deal. Um, so yeah, I went with that with that model and uh, very happy with it. And um, you know, really, the only the biggest difference, and I definitely notice it, is the screen. The screen. I don't know if you've seen one in person yet. Um, I uh, haven't been down to the Apple store yet. Um, yeah, so only for fear that I'd probably just, <laughs> you, you'd I give don't it have a, two things. Give, I don't have the cash for it right now. And sure. then secondarily, I can't get away. Um, I learned with my first Apple watch, um, that I can't get away with the Ion X glass. Um, mm. I'm just too hard on my, on my watches. My, my series zero was so scratched up. Was it? Uh, Yeah. So, you know, I'll bump my wrist into, into things as I'm walking along uh, or when I'm working in the yard, you know, moving, moving wall, wall blocks around or something like that, you know, scrape it across the, the concrete. I probably would should learn to just take my watch <laughs> off when I'm doing those things. But, um, you know, with the, uh, with the Sapphire, it's, that's not a problem. You know, it looks yeah. as good as the day I, I got it and I've been wearing it for, you know, since the series two came out. So um, and unfortunately, uh, there is a, uh, a tax on the aluminum ones because uh, uh, aluminum California. don't come in a non-cellular, I don't think. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess the space gray is aluminum when I think about it. Um, or I mean, uh, I'm sorry that this, the stainless steel ones don't come in a, in a non-cellular. 
Oh, right. Because right. sure. I, I did get the non-cellular. I did, just don't yep. feel the need. So it's not only, you, not only are you paying the stainless steel tax, you're also paying the cellular tax on top of that, whether you're going to use the cellular. No, I, I so yeah, I think it's a waste, honestly. I always have my phone with me. It doesn't make any sense. Then plus I have to pay extra to my carrier to have it on there. So I'm like, silly. Um, I did, but I, I mean, then with, with watch OS five, um, they just released 5.0.1. Um, uh, that was, uh, there was a bit of a bug where it wasn't charging properly. Um, but it's, uh, it seems like there's a trend there with that in iOS 12, you know? Uh, uh, so that was released and some improved, improved it, uh, and is with that. Um, but I'm, I do notice that the, the, the performance is you, you make huge difference performance, of course, because the, the chip, but, uh, it, it's definitely interesting to look at the display now when i was looking at my series three and it just when you look at text messages they're brighter they're easier to see um so they've improved that um don't know anything about anything else yet but the ekg and all that stuff with the health stuff they talked about um because that's not even enabled yet but uh i did notice that the the, the controls in in watch os 5 um is has improved for music i don't know if you've used it for music or not, or, or, or yet or not but uh you know, of course, you go into the watch app on your iPhone and tell it to what what playlist you want to include, um, and uh, it will download it to the watch, and then you can go work out with it, and you don't need to have your phone with you while you're doing that. Um, and, and then AirPods work great with it. So, um, so, but I definitely noticed the the controls seem much more fluid. They're easier to to scroll through the the the, uh, uh, the songs and the playing, and uh, I don't I don't know if you use it for music at all. Uh, no. I mean, I always have my phone with me, like you were saying. I have yeah. a set of AirPods, and so, like, um, oh. yeah, I, you know, and usually when I'm out and about, I'm listening to podcasts, and I know you can do podcasts on it now with yep. with WatchOS uh, 5. So uh, I haven't really taken advantage of that, though, again, because I just always have my phone with me. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way, of course. I'm, what can I tell you? I'm a... And I use, and I use, you know, when I'm out and about to control the podcast, I use just the Siri on the, on the HomePod. So that's true. I guess I could control it from my wrist, but I've never. Well, it seems like every time you play it, it, it does open up on the watch. So you can, so it's really telling you, Hey, you can, you can control this on your watch too, <laughs> if you want to, even though you're playing it on your phone. Uh, yep. So it does give that too. Speaking of the podcast app, I forgot we were going to talk about that. Um, the uh, lots of improvements. You, you, you said you're pretty pleased with it. The podcast oh app. yeah yeah i've been fine with the apple's podcast app for for a okay. while now um i don't know a lot of people really hate it and that's fine there's a lot of great third-party options i love downcast i love oh, yeah. uh, castro downcast is uh, my favorite a lot of people really like overcast that one never really clicked for me but i i can understand overcast why people really different. like it different yeah different. it's it, it they all have their kind of own their own spin on podcasts and what's great is that's what I love about um, all the apps is everybody's kind of got their own take. And, you know, I think that's what a lot of people respond to with Apple's is Apple has its own take on how they think you should listen to podcasts. And right. that might not jive with how you feel like you should listen to podcasts. So you kind of, yeah, yeah. I think podcast apps are a really personal sort of thing and as they should be, I think. And, uh, you know, I'm, there's not one that's going to be all things to all people, but there's definitely one that will be all things to you. Yeah, and then and I've and I, we've had we've had discussions about the podcast apps uh, in prior uh, previous episodes, and like I said, there's so many out there that that uh, we all like. So they're all really good. I mean, yeah. they're all. You, <laughs> I'm hooked you on don't, podcast. <laughs> that's that's the blessing and the curse, right? Is like it's a hard for a lot of people to choose because they are all really good. Um, so really, what it comes down to is, I tell people you sort of need to prioritize. You know, what's your uh, what's your sort of key feature? Like, what is the thing that you want? You know, is it, you want more of like an inbox style thing, you know, which a few of them have where it's like new episodes come in almost like email and you manage them that way, or are you a more traditional kind of person in terms of how you want to do it? and Those sorts of things. So, yeah. So podcast app, let's, uh, let's move on and we'll talk about the iPhone a little bit. Um, we, okay. we both have iPhone 10 S's. You have the 10 S I have the 10 S max. Um, what what made you Ugh, shudder? Oh yeah, because you don't like big phones, right? <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. Uh, I abs- I'm absolutely love to phones. Oh yeah, my god, I, I don't mind it. I like it. I, I had. I the, know a lot of people do. A lot of people. I had the really seven do. plus. I had the eight plus. So uh, and 
to be, I'll still remember, remind everybody to make fun of me the fact that I was I was not buying the iPhone 10. I had the iPhone 8 Plus, and two months later, I bought the iPhone 10. So, uh, you regretted it because you went down in the screen sizes. But no, actually, oh. I, I didn't mind the iPhone 10. I, and, um, <laughs> it was it was actually not that bad. But that's another. Are story. you happier now though? I am. I, I like the size screen. Yeah. I really do. I always have. Yeah. And, and now that it's edged edge, it's great. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty. Guy. That's, pretty there's nothing wrong with that. I'm totally fine with people who like really yeah. large phones. I tried for a year. I mean, I did. Yeah. I, I did a thing on my show, and anybody who listens to my podcast can yeah. can tell you, people thought I was crazy because I knew after two weeks that I didn't didn't like it. Um, they're like, you know, why don't you take it back on the 14 day return policy? And I said, no, I want to, I want to live life a live. full, you know, I don't want to just give it two weeks. I want to give it a full, like, you Hey, maybe it. this thing will grow on me someday. Or maybe it, maybe it is the, you know, maybe it has to do with apps, different apps. And like, I wanted to have the full experience. So I spent a yeah. year with an iPhone, um, the Seven? six plus, six plus. Okay. Six plus. I think the, the, the first year, the plus size came out, right? Is that the first I've plus had, models? I've, Yes, six plus was the first one, right? Yeah, so I had the six plus, and I did it for a year, and I was so happy that the next year when I could get a six S, <laughs> I had the six plus, I had the seven six S plus, I had the seven plus, I had the eight plus. Then I went to the ten, and now I'm at the ten ten S. I think the ten is the ten has kind of been the perfect compromise because yeah, the, the 10, ten is a little bit bigger. So even even that bump up to me was a little a little uncomfortable, but. I, I think it's the right balance for yeah. me between screen size and pocketability. And yeah. that was, that's my key factor is like, I, I like agree. to carry mine in my front pocket and, wow. and the 10 was just, or the, the plus was just, it's big. It works, but it jams into your leg when you sit down and it's just like, ugh. and then I was constantly <laughs> taking it out of my pocket. Yeah. It's okay. So, so you're enjoying the 10s. So you, so you, I love it. Yeah. So, so, and you went from you had the the eight, and then you went to the ten, or I went. I had 10S? the seven. You had the seven. Okay. So then, then I went to the ten. Oh, you that did have the ten. Weird. Yeah, that was oh, the so, year the ten came out. Oh, so you went and, from the ten to the 10s, like I did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I wasn't entirely convinced I was going to. Okay. Um, what sold me on it was the camera stuff. Yeah, the camera. And amazing. now that I've experienced the camera i think it was the right it was the right thing to do i did it in a lot of ways because i knew a lot of people um that listen to my podcast was were going to want to know about it sure good sorry i was about to sneeze there and I oh okay no problem <laughs> <laughs> i thought we lost you there uh <laughs> so uh, uh so so the camera yeah the camera is just amazing i think they really they re- really outdone themselves with that um just the quality of the photos uh, uh the just incredible yeah. and to be i mean to be fair it's not really the camera because hardware wise yes no. there's a there's a slightly bigger sensor yeah. um but beyond that you know so effective and effectively i don't know that there's a new lens although effectively it's a little bit wider on the on the uh wide angle lens i guess it's it's effectively 20 six millimeters versus 28 millimeters if you've seen anybody who's posted side by side photos you get a little more frame in the wide angle lens, but, right. um, where it's making a difference is in all the computational photography stuff. Um, so right. it's the, it's the extra processing, it's the neural engine. It's all, so that's where the quality of the pictures is making a difference. And it was noticeable even to people, you know, I'm not a photography person, but like even my daughter, the first day I had it, I took a yeah. snapshot just in the house, testing it out. She looked at the photo and goes, why is your, why is your, image so much better like she instantly recognized yeah. it as being better than the 10 oh the 10 uh, but the, the 10 to the 10, 10 which takes great yeah. pictures yeah, exactly really <laughs> okay I, I still have my 10 i'm gonna be getting rid of it but uh, yeah, I, want, take, I, sh- take I should do some comparisons some, yeah. yeah take some comparison <laughs> shots of with say you know same lighting same position and you'll see there is there is a huge difference um the only area where the 10 may have an edge and this is bugging me a little bit you know it came out i think this week in the um what are they calling it smooth smooth gate or oh um antenna gate no it was a smooth gate is what they're calling it i think like uh people were alleging that apple was doing like facial smoothing on selfies and stuff like that right um what it's turned out to be is with the new computational photography and the smart HDR, um, 
the way they're doing it tends to and it's not just for faces it's for anything that has texture it it tends to soften the images that you don't you don't get the kind of sharpening that you did yeah. with the old system and they weren't even doing sharpening in the old system it's just um because they're doing these multiple exposures when you merge those exposures together you get an effective softening right. of the image and then apple isn't reapplying any kind of um, sharpening on top of that. So you tend to get these more, there's tends to be less detail in the images. And that is something I also noticed almost immediately. And it does kind of bug me a little bit, especially in like landscapes. If you start to zoom yeah. in a little bit, you get almost what I call the, um, kind of like a watercolor effect. So if yeah. you have, you know, off in the distance, like leaves in a tree or something like that, there'll be more kind of like these blobs. You won't see defined edges on those, on those leaves. Gotcha. Um, and so the, really the only way to work around that is to get an app that you will, one, you can turn off the smart HDR. So if you turn off the smart HDR, it'll act more like, um, it did with the iPhone 10. Uh, yeah. if you just use the standard HDR, uh, it kind of gets rid of that computational stuff. So that's probably the easiest way if people like, are like, Oh, I really hate that look. But, <laughs> um, you know, just overall in terms of the tonal quality, in terms of the image quality, right. uh, there's a big difference, I think, in the 10s versus versus the 10 for your average snapshots. Right. And it is kind of an averaging, right? So, yep. um, you know, you get better low light. Uh, oh, so the other thing that it's doing with the computational photography that's also adding to that softening is exactly. um, they're doing uh, a lot of extra um, noise reduction. Like they're pretty heavy handed on the noise reduction right. in the new phones. And so that's also causing that that smoothing effect. No, it's so if you don't like that, you probably want to turn off the smart HDR. Turn it off. So and then uh, just just uh, as we wrap things up here, I wanted to talk a little bit. Once you take a little bit on the the ten R, which uh, again we said it's going to be out in uh, October here. Uh, what's your thoughts of that phone? I think it's. I mean, I think it's going to be a hot hot seller for Apple. I, I think it's the best phone Apple made this year. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, it, in, terms, it, in terms of in terms of future yet? set to price. <laughs> Well, in terms of future set to price. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you in essence have almost everything, almost everything that's in the 10S and the 10S Plus at about, a, what, $250, $300 savings. Right. Um, you're losing, obviously, the, the telephoto lens. I think you're losing. Yeah. The, the, uh, it's some the, of uh, the contrast ratio portrait difference. lighting effects in the selfie camera. Right. Um, the display is liquid retina versus super retina. I mean, just subtle stuff. I mean, just the well, and, resolution. And on, on the display, I mean, a lot of that display stuff is a matter of to taste. most people, it doesn't, yeah. And the other thing is, is like Apple's LCD technology is like the best in the world. Like it, yeah. I don't think there's another display, you know, another smartphone LCD display that can match, you know, Apple's LCD no. display. And what's funny is it's a Samsung display, right? But um, even Samsung's own devices, just because of how Apple color calibrates them at the factory and just some extra stuff that they do. Yeah. Um, like, I don't, I would be, I need to go into the store and put them side by side. You know, I know what to look for. So, uh, you know, I sure. can tell the difference between an OLED and an LCD. But I think most people can't, especially yeah. an Apple LCD. Yeah. It's like, gonna. I I think they're gonna have a tough time keeping up. I really do. I think it's gonna sell. Plus, you great. get colors. The yeah. colors are. And the colors are cool. Yeah. Get so you get one thing that you can't get in the other one. So you get blue, you know, three hundred fifty dollars in your pocket. So you can buy an Apple Watch and a uh, and a iPhone Ten R. You know, get, like get a new Apple Watch and an iPhone Ten R for the same price as a Ten S. And I know it's crazy. Uh, but it's, oh, I, mean, they, I mean, I like the, they have coral and yellow. I mean, those are, those are just some screen. And you can colors. get your Apple watch band to match your. They, match yeah, your I see. Oh, that's the right. They have the yellow bands <laughs> to get match them. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, once, well, this is going to be interesting to see when it, once, once it's out. Uh, I almost thought about holding out, honestly, for a 10 R um, as my upgrade. The problem is, is it's size wise. It sits between the 10 yeah. S and the 10 S max. And again, the 10 S for me is already pushing the, pushing the size. Boundaries. It is a bigger so, screen. It is 6.1 versus 5.8 yeah. on the 10 S. So yeah. And it is physically dimension wise. I believe it's a, it's right between 
right. sits right between the tennis. So, but no, I I I look forward to it. It's going to be a pre-order on the nineteenth of October, and I, it'll be start shipping on the twenty-sixth. It's going to be a, definitely an interesting product uh, to see what uh, what when what people are going to be buying it. I, I'll predict right now. I think it's going to sell two 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 to one versus the ten S ten S Max together. I right? bet. So. I mean, Sales were pretty steady for the tennis and the tennis max, uh, as, as as they've been reporting. So, but I agree with you. Yeah, it's it, it's gosh, two to one, easy, very easy. So, well, Adam, it's, it's we're we're at that time to wrap this up. I I can't thank you cool. enough for being here today. Like we had a lot of fun. Um, and uh, that's great. And we're, a, a lot of fun. Thanks for really joining me here. So let's close this out. Um, uh, thanks for joining me today. We hope you are more in touch with iOS after hearing this episode. Subscribe to our podcast in your favorite podcatcher and show your friends how to find us on the Apple Podcasts, the Google Podcasts, the Stitcher Radio, and even Spotify. Email your questions and comments to us. If you have any feedback, send it to feedback at intouchwithios.com or visit our website, intouchwithios.com, and click on the contacts or simply add a comment in the show notes. We look forward to bringing you more useful information in future episodes. I'm Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And Adam, where we can f- where can we find you? Uh, it's pretty easy. You can uh, find the podcast on iTunes. Just search for MacCast. You can also check out MacCast.com. Uh, that has kind of links to everything else. And uh, MacCast on Twitter. Great. And we hope you'll subscribe for future episodes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>